The dark vortex of shadows that was building treacherously around him suddenly dispersed as Ethan walked through it in measured steps toward Zack. His eyes were like dark red blood, and his aura had finally darkened, as dark as the shadows gathering behind him. Zack smiled in satisfaction as he lifted his head and saw Ethan, who was looking down at him from his higher position. This vampire prince was finally serious, but it was still not enough. This was not the Ethan that he wanted to see. Not yet. Perhaps his persuasion was not enough. Rising from the rubble, Zack attempted to catapult into the sky to prepare for another summoning spell that he intended to use to taunt Ethan. But Ethan moved a little faster and had him held down with an incredible force. Zack fought to break free, and the two engaged in another deadly battle. Ethan did not allow Zack any breathing space to have the chance to retaliate, nor chant his blasted spells to summon even more of those annoying demons. However, realizing that time was running out, and a total waste of time in him trying to fight Ethan when he was still in full control of his power, Zack unleashed his dragon power. His scales appeared, and his skin darkened. The next instant, he managed to break free, and he catapulted into the air, and the shadows appeared again, and this time in a larger volume. The vortex he created was immense this time around. Blood spilled from his body as he chanted his spells. Freya and Lilith finally materialized at the scene, just right behind Ethan. Kyle and Lucas also arrived not long after, as another demon came out from the vortex, and it immediately went after them. By the time the seventh demon came out, something unthinkable happened. Black, large wings suddenly grew from Ethan's back. Everyone was shocked at the sudden appearance of Ethan's majestic wings, unable to believe what they were seeing. Those pair of long and powerful flight mechanisms were flapping elegantly in the air, maintaining Ethan's position without any trouble. It seemingly felt that every slow upward and downward stroke was deliberate. Each fluttering of shiny inky black feather drove everyone looking to be in dumbstruck and awe. Kyle and Lucas were so shocked, they were momentarily distracted from the fight, which was not something vampires of their caliber would ever do. But this just went to show how stunned they were with the current ongoings of their very own vampire prince. What was going on? Wings? My brother had wings? Since when? How in the world? What the hell was going on? Even Lucas, who was a close and loyal follower of the prince, had absolutely no inkling of this part that apparently his highness had concealed within himself. And conceal it well, he certainly did. Because he had been distracted, Kyle nearly got slashed by one of the summoned demons that they were fighting. And if it were not for Lucas coming to Kyle's aid and blocking the demon's move, that would prove to be a fatal blow to the young vampire prince. Kyle! Concentrate! Lucas roared at the young prince, and Kyle could only flush an embarrassment and obey. He knew better from all the trainings he had been having that distractions could very well mean the end of one's life in a battle. Knowing that he could not further afford any more moments of distraction against this monster he and Lucas were facing, or else he might really die, and perhaps even implicate his partner to lose his own life as well. Letting out a small but spirited grunt, Kyle resolutely shifted his eyes away from his brother, who now was looking nowhere near vampire-like as the rest of them were. Kyle determined in his heart that he must, no, he will survive this battle, so he could question the hell out of his brother on not only this matter on what the hell was he exactly, but also on other various things he was sure to be still hiding from him. At ground level, Freya and Lilith, who were also staring up in the air at where Ethan was hovering, remained frozen looking at the magnificent dark wings spreading out before them. Lilith could be seen to have her mouth partially hanging open due to the shock of seeing a vampire suddenly sprouting wings. What was this? Was sprouting wings now similar to mushrooms sprouting after the rain? 
Lilith felt as if the worldviews she had held on to for so long are being challenged greatly at the sight that made her head spin. Disbelief was clearly evident in Freya's eyes, but she did not look to be as shocked as the other that was beside her. Instead, there was a deep look of realization that had sparked in her eyes, as if she had now finally found the answer to the puzzle that she had been unable to solve all this time, right until now. And from the look in her eyes, it seemed as if she was able to unravel and decipher that elusive answer from looking at this unbelievable scene that had unfolded in front of her. Ethan's body blazed with staggering power. They could not see his expression from where they were, since his back was facing them. But at that moment, goosebumps prickled and covered their skin just by looking at his shockingly large, formidable, and ebony wings, making him look like he was one of those awe-inspiring fallen angels who had emerged from the depths of hell itself. Zack smiled at the sight of Ethan's black wings that had finally grown from his back. It was working. He could almost not control his glee, as it seemed that his plan was at long last taking shape. The real Ethan had finally shown up. While everyone who were watching from the ground were still frozen in shock due to utter disbelief, Zack had already called forth another pair of demons from the underworld. But before the ninth demon could fully step out and materialize from the depths of the Black Vortex, it unexpectedly closed, and the Vortex somehow reversed its original functions and ended up swallowing the ninth demon back to God knows where. One would have to assume it was back to the Underworld. However, at that moment, no one was in the right frame of mind to bother about where the Scourge ended up at. It could be sent out into the furthest reach of the universe for all they cared. Right now, what was of utmost importance was to stop the escalating of the chaos that Zack was trying to hasten upon them all. The next thing Zack knew, the earth shook mightily, and he was viciously shoved and pinned down to the ground. The impact was so strong that it literally created a small crater as if a decently sized meteorite had recently struck in the area. Blood spurted out like a small fountain from Zack's mouth. When he came to his senses a couple seconds later, he realized that Ethan's hand was outstretched and his fingers were tightly curled around his neck. Tight enough that he could feel the pressure and power exerted, but yet still not enough to completely cut off his breathing nor snap his head off to kill him right on the spot. This not only did not phase or throw Zack off at all, but to one's consternation, those nearby enough could actually see Zack who kept on smiling. His eyes were brilliantly offset on his face, blazing with nothing but an intensity that is clearly emitting a dangerous thrill despite the severity of his own situation at hand. However, his smile eventually faded after a short few minutes after seeing that nothing had changed in Ethan's eyes. It was like a frigid wasteland, devoid of any living emotions whatsoever. If Zack had hoped for something to flicker and come to life with the actions that he had been pushing with, he was to be sorely disappointed in the reactions, more aptly the lack of them, in the face of this vampire ice prince. They were dark, bloody red, and colder than any forms of ice but this were still not the eyes he had wanted nor expected to see gazing at him from this familiar face. A couple of seconds passed as Zack wondered to himself before coming to the only conclusion he could. The only reasoning he could end up with was that this man was still actually in full control of himself and his power. How on earth could that be? What would it take for him to even shake a little of that eternal frost composure Ethan had, and get even a slight glimpse of him losing control over his emotions or well-made plans? Damn, what was Ethan made of? Seriously? It was so much harder, almost impossible, to get this vampire ice prince to crumble a little under any pressure than for a massive block of glacier to melt. 
Zack could only gnash his teeth in utter rage. And this further angered him. Is this still not enough? Why? What more is he required to do? What other vile acts would it take for him to end this? He wanted everything to be over now. Because he could not take it anymore. Though his powers are limitless and inexhaustible, that he was yet to scrape the bottom of his own source of power, his soul was exceedingly exhausted. His spirit was drained to the point of being so fragile it would shatter with a little knock on it. He did not want to continue this any longer. He wanted death and ultimate darkness now to stop this corroding plan that was within him. Would the gods ever be so merciful to him and grant him this one and final bliss in death, which would be his eternal slumber? He begged whatever gods there were out there to just permit him this one last request. At that moment, Zack's gaze accidentally fell on Freya, and he saw her wobble and fall over, only to end up crumbling to the hard and unforgiving ground. Lilith only had let go of her for a few seconds just to shield her from the stray debris that were heading her way. But from Zack's point of view, the only scene that entered his eyes was the moment Freya fell to the ground, and only one jarring thing blasted into his mind, that she was going to die. Now, Zack suddenly felt this taut string in his mind snapped at that, and a rush of something surged forth and flooded every single cell in his body. His mouth opened in a silent snarl and roared out a blood-curdling battle cry, and tremendous power flared out from the depth of his soul. His eyes were like two bright moons that were suddenly swallowed by darkness. It was as if there were a total eclipse, of his consciousness that was reflected in those initially twin moons of his. Two silvery light turned to pitch black, and he struck back at Ethan with such ferocity and power, one that was far stronger than what he had at the outset of the battle until now, had shown to anyone. No, at that moment, this Zack held no resemblance whatsoever to the original Zack they, or even he himself, knew anymore. He was losing his mind. He had already lost his mind. And apparently, he had also lost his soul and spirit in the process. The outpouring of his massive powers was consuming him. He had gone berserk. There could not be seen any finesse or clarity in the blows that he was exchanging with Ethan at this current state. It seemed as if he were moving only on his instinct and killing drive that had been awakened. The intense battle before this paled in comparison to what was going on between Zack and Ethan now. Now it was not just Oliver, but also the other vampires who were distracted because of this earth-shattering fight between the two immortals. Surprisingly, even the summoned demons were affected and had paused as well by the battle aura that were flowing out in waves. Every attack was too powerful, too fast, that it was like a choreographed dance and exchange between two gods of destruction. An immortal going mad was so strong and beyond powerful. Yet, Ethan on the opposite side was able to hold his ground against a mad immortal half-dragon. This was the power of the dragon and the power of the most powerful witch combined, and its results were deadly to say the least. With this kind of power being unleashed into the world, there really was no need for Zack to even bother with the summoning of those demons from hell. His power itself was already a calamity of epic proportions. Another earthquake occurred, as one of them was finally hit and thrown down. But this time, it was Ethan's turn to take the hit, and he ended up falling to the ground. Casually rising from the debris, as if it were only a mosquito sting that hit him, Ethan licked his bleeding lips. The expression on his face remained calm and unfathomable. Despite the situation, he remained looking unfazed, though it was such a rare sight seeing him disheveled and bloodied up in a fight. Zack was up there, cackling away like a real villain. He looked as though Satan had possessed him, and everyone could not help but shiver. What was going to happen now? 
Can anyone kill Zack at this point? It was very hard for everyone to look at the once-like angel creature turning into such creature of destruction. Oliver and the demons were gone. He had a plan and managed to lure them all to another area, leaving only Zack to be dealt by Ethan's hand alone. Yes! This world shall be destroyed! said Zack, laughing, surrounding himself with a thick wall of the black shadow. The spinning vortex appeared again. However, this time, it was becoming bigger and bigger. It seemed he was planning to summon the army he had promised about earlier on. If that demonic army arrives in this plane of existence, that would be a whole new catastrophic event no one would be able to predict its outcome. Ethan's eyes seemed to gleam with a baleful fire, but his stoic face remained as unchangeable as marble. Seeing the demons that were stepping out of the vortex one after another, Ethan closed his eyes. The world seemed to have halted. When he opened his eyelids again, one of his eyes were not red nor gray any longer. It had turned completely black, and it was not just his irises. Even the whites of his eyes were midnight black, gleaming with unrestrained power and utter darkness. Zack's laughter was hysteric and villainous. His once clear and pure eyes were currently unrecognizable to all who had known him as their friend, and they were horrified at the insanity that blazed with an unholy light in those two used to be moonlit eyes. Madness had filled them, and it seemed nothing would be able to ever pull him back to sanity any longer. The Zack that they knew and cared for is no more. Instead, in his place, was this demented witch who was crazy strong and an immortal at that, going around summoning high-level demons from the underworld and doing his best to usher in the end of the world. Nearby, the vortex he had initially created had now gone too large that its epic proportions were truly a sight in itself to behold. Though there was nothing positive, nor visually attractive, that could make one appreciate looking at it, however, there was still that compulsion that drew everyone's eyes to look at that viciously spinning vortex, which was like a black hole appearing at the heart of the abandoned city. As it became larger, it seemed to have gained a certain sentient characteristic to it, if one were to focus their gaze on it a little longer. The spinning of the black shadows surrounding the center of the vortex had somehow developed a rhythmic pulse to it, not unlike the rhythmic beating of a heart. Those who realized and noticed the pattern that was being displayed by this vortex had a very bad feeling and a premonition that worse things were about to happen. There was nothing to say that this vortex would be able to run itself without being controlled and constantly being supplied a power source from its summoner in this case, would be Zack, and carry out the act of summoning powerful demons from the underworld all on its own. If that were to happen, then Zack would then be freed up. An insane and freed up Zack was not something good at this moment in time. It did not take long for Zack to continuously summon more than 20 high-level demons, and though the skies and the ground were already ravaged with battles caused by these newly summoned demons, there was still no sign of him stopping his chants and hand signals, which meant that more demons were on their way, crossing through the portal. Oliver was back from wherever he had lured the first batch of demons away to fight them off, and now he was attempting to approach Zack. But the demons who were just summoned formed a barrier surrounding Zack, and blocked Oliver from approaching any closer, and he ended up fighting the numbers of demons all by himself. Zack! Oliver shouted at Zack, trying to get his attention whenever he had a breathing space in between exchanging blows with the demons he was fighting against. But his shouts seemed not to have made even a single impact upon the crazed witch, who was hell-bent on summoning as many demons as he could. Oliver could be seen to be a little more frantic in fighting with the large group of demons who had now surrounded him and blocked his path toward Zack. He knew that he had to somehow reach Zack before things got even worse. Not that the current situation was not already bad enough. 
Stop what you're doing, Zack! Damn you! Stop this madness! He yelled as he suddenly slashed his sword out at one of the demon's head, causing the demon to go stiff and its head rolling its shoulders the next second. Oliver's eyes were also becoming more and more severe, and his moves were getting sharper and more intense, bringing a pressurizing force to the demons who were surrounding him. He too was close to going berserk. These demons came at Oliver all at once, until he was not visible to those looking on anymore. Kyle, Lucas, Freya, and Lilith, who were keeping track on Zack and Oliver's situation, were slightly concerned when they could not see Oliver any longer, and continued to be swarmed by those ferocious demons for longer than expected. Just when they had the thought that they could not stand it any longer, the next moment, all the demons swarming around Oliver were thrown away as though a blast had just occurred within the center of them all. Oliver's torn body parts were coming together and patching themselves up as he remained where he was, eyes intense and blazing like golden lava. His aura progressively darkened, and a wave of strong power exploded out all around until it even reached the ground. He too was quickly losing his mind in this ongoing fight that seemed to have no end. He seemed to be just on the verge of fully losing himself and going on a more berserk rampage. Even the demons looked a little shaken and fearful of the powers that Oliver emitted. But like puppets, they soon regrouped and simultaneously attacked Oliver again when Zack gave out the order to them with just a wave of his hand. Oliver spread his arms wide, out to his sides, fingers splayed open, and lips smiling as he began to work the wind. There could be seen little cyclones spinning around the tips of each of his fingers and around his wrists. As he stood there, the strength of each cyclone continued to build. Fine. Call all the demons from here, Zack. I'll entertain them all. Oliver shouted out his challenge, and the dark clouds in the sky began moving. Thunder and lightning intensified as Oliver created a strong tornado with crystallized weapons. The demons who got hit by the tornadoes got pierced by the crystallized ice. But like him, they too simply healed and reconnected their body parts after a while. It truly was a senseless battle, where both sides were neither winning nor losing. A battle that somehow seemed to be lasting an eternity. Those looking on could not help but feel helpless. Is everything lost? Is this the end? On the ground, everyone could do nothing else but watch, open-mouthed, and pray to whatever gods there be to be on their side and help Zack regain his sanity and stop this futile battle. The only thing that was keeping them from losing all hope was the sight of Oliver seemingly enjoying the fierce battle and fighting the demons like a madman. He was like a beast that had, at long last, been let loose from his cage, and now he was enjoying the hunt. He had tried to destroy Zack's vortex by calling a very strong wind lance to slash at it, but the wind was swallowed by the black hole. He tried to reach Zack too, but Zack's demons were hell-bent in preventing him from coming anywhere close, much less touching their summoner. At one point, Oliver looked down at where Ethan was standing, and as though there was a wordless communication between them, Oliver stopped attacking Zack and he concentrated on his fight against the demons. Everything seemed to be pointing to, and just going towards one thing alone. Madness. Everyone and everything is spiraling down the rabbit hole into lunacy. Friend fighting against friend. Good guy turned into a demonic rogue. Stable environment gone haywire, and on its merry way to global destruction if nothing was done to stop it. Those on the ground seemed to feel the stirrings of helplessness and hopelessness as things continued on and no progress was made with Zack, Oliver, or Ethan. Were they supposed to lie down and accept things as it comes? Were they expected to surrender their lives just because Zack had decided on things on his own and they had no say in the matter at all? That is so unfair. Absolute power triumphs over all. 
And that was how the world works. Watching the half-dragon and demons literally shake the earth as they exchanged powerful blows in the sky, it all felt like a nightmare. Unfortunately, this nightmare had moved from an imaginary thing into the real world that they could not avoid. It was as though the world had descended into madness together with Zack. Kyle and Lilith could not even begin to understand and process what their eyes were seeing. It was obvious that they were telling themselves that this was probably a very, very bad dream. One that they would very soon wake up from and would be able to put it behind them with a laugh. They prayed and wished that it would be so. Clenching a handful of her cloak as she looked up, Freya felt a deep, piercing pain blooming in her chest. Her entire soul ached. No, it burned and seared, realizing that things had truly become so messed up. What in the world happened? Why must this happen to her? To Zack? To this world? She could only ask herself. Which god could she bring her complaints to? Even if she found one to state her case, would it make a difference? Would their fates be reversed? She remembered how Zack previously had confided her that he did not want to die a villain. But just look at him now. He looked even more sinister and even more dangerous than that cold-hearted Dahlia. He had become the creature he did not want to become. A creature that he had hated to his core. It was so unfair. She could not understand why such a gentle being had to end up like this. As she looked up at him in the air, laughing up there, acting for all the world as if he were ready to burn the whole world with him, Freya's lips trembled. She did not know if he had truly changed and really wanted this, or was he still putting on an act? If it was an act, it really was a damn good one. The sound of flapping wings pulled her attention, and her gaze fell on Ethan. He was still but his wings were spread out so elegantly behind him. Staring at his back, Freya did not know why, but Ethan's voice suddenly echoed in her head. Keep him going on the right path, because if you fail and he ends up turning into an enemy, I'll find a way for him to be dead and stay dead the next time too. These words from Ethan were so cryptic. Was he threatening her with Zack's eventual death? The memory of those words elicited a bitter smile, and Freya's eyes blurred. That was right. She had failed. No, she did not just fail to keep him from pursuing and continuing on the right path. She was probably the biggest reason why he chose to stray towards the wrong path, too. Freya's heart squeezed even tighter as she had to fight the tears from falling from her eyes. Ethan? She called out weakly and she knew he had heard her. When you said those words to me back then... She paused and swallowed, choking on the pain in her throat to stop her voice from shaking. Did you already know that one day, this would happen? Silence reigned supreme between them for a while. Ethan did not volunteer to speak. But to Freya, his silence was as good as him giving her his answer. And from what she knows of this vampire prince... His answer would most probably be yes. The thought that Ethan was truly going to kill Zack pained Freya even more. What had Zack done to warrant himself this kind of ending? Nothing. He did not do anything. All he did was sacrifice himself for someone else. All he wanted was to die so someone else could have the chance to live. He had never asked for anything on his own behalf. Everything he had asked for was only for someone else. Oh, Zack! Freya gasped at the sharp, lancing pain that sliced through her heart at that thought. Numb with pain, Freya opened her lips again. Ethan! She called out his name again. Have you ever made a sacrifice for a woman? She asked. The world seemed to halt. The storm Oliver had created from his wind-controlling powers lingered heavily in the area, and they were now under the eye of the storm. Ethan remained silent. 
but as he spread his wings and prepared to fly off, he turned to Freya, revealing to her his one eye that looked darker than the darkness itself. Never, he replied in a cold and emotionless voice, and then he was gone. Up in the air, Oliver was fighting those demons that were surrounding him nonstop, like a killing god. His counterattacks on them were savage to the extreme, and the demons kept being torn into pieces before gathering up and becoming whole again. Freya could only watch as Ethan flew off towards the next clouds and black shadows swirling in the sky, like a dark angel where the fierce and surreal battle was occurring. His one-word response to her question earlier was not even a surprise to her, in fact. What shocked her to her core, actually, was how his eyes looked when she caught sight of it. That one eye that was so dark, that one could not even see any trace of light or color in it anymore, had caused Priya's heart to tremble uncontrollably. The horror that gripped her when she first saw his real face was nothing compared to what she was feeling at the moment. Freya's mind simply blanked out as she processed everything. Even though as of now, she had already lost all of her Witch Queen's powers, the memories and knowledge that had been passed on to her, and all those that she had seen in her reign as Queen, still stayed on within her. And she would never, ever forget that face, those large and powerful black wings, and that single lone dark eye. No matter how incomplete the picture was in her mind, she could no longer reason with herself that what she saw in her memories might not be the whole truth, and that it was perhaps too early for her to come up with any conclusions on the matter, especially when she did not see everything. She was a firm believer of only believing when seeing the whole story, especially when dealing with important matters such as this. However, seeing that the owner of that horrifying dark eye was actually no other than Ethan, she could no longer make herself not believe the things she had seen. After a long while, her trembling hands managed to clench itself into tight fists. When she lifted her head again and looked up into the sky, the helplessness that had consumed her, which had been reflected in her eyes, was finally gone. A flash of silver gleamed in her eyes for a moment before it disappeared again, as if it were never there in the first place. Suddenly, she felt out of breath. Her heartbeat literally stopped for a few moments. Freya's body froze, and she clutched at her chest painfully. She could feel that her breath was being sucked away from her body. The acute pain that kept lancing through her chest area in intervals of a few seconds caused all her muscles to be paralyzed. Could it be that her time was already up? Does it mean she has to get ready to die now? Those thoughts came as lightning bolt as she tried to juggle her tangled up feelings. Freya fought so desperately to draw in breath after breath. She did not know why she was so frenzied. She thought she had so much time to prepare her heart and ready her mind. She did not. Wait! She was screaming inside her own mind. She just needed a little bit longer. No, she only needed a few more seconds. That is all. Not yet, please. Her cries and supplication sadly were outwardly unheard, and all within her mind. No one could see her struggling with the chaos that was going on around them. Between her silent battle, her heart began beating again. She was able to breathe again. Her lashes were wet with tears, even as they rolled down her cheeks, her chest heaving up and down as if she had just finished a marathon. She stilled for a moment before realizing that it was just about to hit midnight. There must be a reason why Zack had given them that timing as a deadline. She guessed from what had happened earlier that he had known earlier that she was going to die by midnight if Zack was still alive by then. She fought with all the remaining strength that she had left to rise, her eyes now blazing with pure and undiluted determination and will. However, what flared out from her eyes 
was not the determination to stay alive. Lilith, who finally snapped back to reality from the seemingly potent spell that had influenced her at the sight of Ethan's eyes, immediately rushed over to help Freya when she saw her trying so desperately to stand, even when she seemed to already be on her last breaths. When she turned and saw the look that was shining from Freya's eyes, the young witch could only be rendered speechless. What on earth had happened within that few minutes? Why did her queen look as if she had just received a mission so important that she looked as if she would be willing to give her very life to see it through, no matter the cost? Despite her weakened state, the look in Freya's eyes even made Lilith feel the chills that crawled under her skin. She wanted to ask and dig more on it, but without knowing why, she could not do it. Kyle and Lucas, on the other hand, stayed still as statues behind the two witches. Oliver had never allowed any demons to reach them again, and since they could not fly, there was no way for them to join in the battle arena, which had long since been moved to the sky. Kyle and Lucas could only look on as they were torn between feeling left out and relief that they were not battling it out with those crazily powered up super demons. And now, the two vampires were not just standing there, feeling both awed and helpless at the same time, but paralyzed as well, due to what they had just witnessed earlier on. Their almighty pure-blooded vampire prince did not just grow wings, he also had a strange eye that never belonged to a vampire. At that moment, Kyle felt as though he did not even know this Ethan, who was with them right now anymore. He could not help but ask himself whether if he was actually the real Ethan Rain. Because no matter how he thought about it, this person was not just a vampire. No pure-blooded vampires have characteristics such as what he had displayed. He could not even call such a being a vampire anymore, because he just was not. He was already something else. As soon as Ethan managed to cross over that large black vortex, he stilled where he was in the air. His wings were flapping elegantly and steadily, keeping him right where he wanted to be as he watched the chaos with his usual calmness portrayed across his face. One of his hands then moved up and calmly covered over his one eye. The one eye that had turned entirely black not too long ago and had frightened his own companions. His gaze was firmly fastened on Zack, who just ignored his presence there and continued summoning demons without any signs of stopping whatsoever. The demons were coming out of the vortex one after another at a rate that seemed to be increasing in speed to those who were looking on. If this continued on, there will be no guarantees that Oliver would still be able to handle all these summoned demons on his own. As it is now, Oliver already has his plate full just keeping those demons at bay. At that moment, Zack's gaze fell towards Ethan, and a wicked, villainous smile flashed across the silver-haired witch's lips. That smile did not spell anything good to those who had seen it. However, for Ethan, who had clearly seen that smile, it did nothing to change the poker-faced look that was still firmly pasted on his face. One had to wonder what it would take for Ethan to finally show some sort of emotion on that canvas he calls a face. Zack's body had gone as dark as the dragon scale. His golden eyes were burning with hell fire, and all the evil intentions that could be conceived in the world. He was now hell-bent to execute the threat he had promised when he was still sane. Though insane he might be, it seemed he still had the presence of mind in remembering the words he had uttered earlier on. As if he had forgotten everything else but this one matter. It just kept on ringing in his mind, unable to let it go. It seemed that there was nothing left in him but the driving intention of summoning an army of demons and for them to go out and destroy the world. He could not even seem to recognize Ethan anymore as their eyes met. Zack could only see him and identify Ethan as a powerful foe that he needed to vanquish 
to attain his goals, and he only smiled. However, that smile was not one that was filled with goodwill, but it was one with nothing else but bloodlust and the excitement to kill. Wearing that satanic smile which could freeze the hearts of all who see it, Zack lifted his hand and simply just pointed a finger at Ethan. Instantly, with that one movement, it made all the summoned demons turn around from where they were and look straight at Ethan. And with a flick of Zack's hand, like mindless puppets who had received the orders from their master, the demons flew towards Ethan, all eager and willing to attack, to kill. Their movements were similar to the swarm of bats frantically flying out of the cave after their nap were disturbed. Ethan, however, did not even move a muscle and remained in the air where he was, wings flapping steadily in the air, and waited for the demons to approach. As the swarm of demons came at him with growls and roars, a strong gust of wind came rushing from behind him suddenly and out of nowhere. It lifted the bangs of his hair that were shielding his eyes from others' view, and his frightening red eye came into full view. All of a sudden, the demons stopped as if they could sense an immense danger that would attack them without warning, and it totally confused them. When Zack had previously ordered the first batch of demons to attack Oliver, they had attacked Oliver mindlessly, even with the amount of pressure and power that was emanating from Oliver. They had attacked so carelessly, as they knew that no matter what the immortal did to them, there was not the possibility that he could kill them. But this creature before them had made the demons instinctively stop with his frighteningly savage killing aura that was leaking from him. The demons could feel real danger oozing from him, as if this strange, red-eyed, winged creature could actually kill them, the immortal demons. The demons' sudden halt in their charge made the mad Zack smile fade. Kill him! He roared out his orders once again, and the demons physically jerked before moving. However, it could be seen clearly that though they continued to advance on Ethan, it was clear as day that they were being forced against their wills. But Ethan did not seem to care about the numbers of demons. He accelerated right into the first demon that came into his reach, and his fist was immediately planted into the demon's face. Before the demon could even realize it, its head had already exploded like a balloon with Ethan's vicious and fast attack. The demon that was killed then immediately turned into a pure black ash. The pile of ash swirled for a moment in the air, before returning into the vortex. Ethan removed his hand off his dark as midnight eye, and the moment his eyelid lifted, the demons froze on the spot in horror. It actually was not just due to watching one of their own being turned into ash, but at the sight of his eyes. Those ebony and fully pitch black eye of his. The sight of that purely ebony eye, without a single trace of white in it, truly gave everyone who looked the jitters. Even the demons were not exempt from that same reaction. The sight of these mighty and supreme demons that had been summoned from the lowest depths of hell, shaking so badly as though a kitten thoroughly drenched in ice-cold water and were literally trembling in fear before Ethan, was truly unthinkable. This just made everyone on the ground gape in utter shock. With the exception of Freya, who had her face completely passive, as if the shocking event was barely any news to her. Her mind did not seem to be focused on the happenings that were playing out before their eyes. It was as if she was lost in some other, more important thoughts. Lucas, Kyle said, unable to take his gaze away from the unbelievable scene that was folding out before his very eyes. Do you know about this? Did you have any idea that my brother... His speech was not smooth, and it petered out. It was a clear testament to how disturbed his inner thoughts and feelings were about the things he was seeing being exhibited by his very own brother. Lucas turned slowly to face Kyle fully, and could only shake his head dumbly, his mouth opening and closing. But in the end, there was not a single sound that came forth from his lips. He could not even utter a single word 
due to the shock and seeing his lord exhibiting such weird and powerful characteristics. Tell me, Lucas. That person up there could not possibly be my brother, right? The young vampire prince asked again. Disbelief was plainly etched on his handsome face, and denial evident in his voice. But Lucas could only give Kyle the same response he had given him a few seconds ago. There was nary a word that he could respond to the young prince. I mean, look. It doesn't quite make sense, does it? Kyle's lips curved into a forced smile. Why would powerful demons such as those summoned by Zack even tremble before a vampire? It would have made more sense if they acted this way when they were fighting with Oliver. Oliver is not only a dragon, but more importantly, he's immortal too. As for my brother, he's powerful, yes, I admit that. I know that Ethan is the most powerful vampire that ever existed. But ultimately, he's just a vampire. And yet, this person up there could actually turn demons to dust in just one single move and make them tremble before him? The same demons Oliver couldn't even kill with his immense strength. It's almost like he's not the king of the vampires anymore, but the demons. Shaking his head, Kyle ran his fingers through his hair and tugged them hard. His young mind just could not grasp nor understand what was going on anymore, and he was utterly overwhelmed. If that scarily overpowered person up there was indeed the same brother he had and knew, then Kyle had that sinking feeling that after this, if he survived through this battle, there was no way he would be able to look at Ethan and see him as a mere pure-blooded vampire anymore. What was happening here is truly mind-blowing and could shake the beliefs in the foundations of certain things one thought was true and unchangeable. Up in the sky, Oliver had been closely observing all that was happening, and now a devilish smirk grew across his lips. His eyes were now gleaming with triumph as his face showed the look of as expected of Ethan as he glanced over at Ethan. But on the other side, Zack was expressing a totally opposite reaction. The Mad Witch roared menacingly, and suddenly, the demons spread their numbers out across the visible expanse of the sky. Even though the demons were trembling wretchedly, they were still forced to move as though they had no power at all to resist their summoner. They literally had no choice in the matter. The world seemed to have stopped revolving as everyone held their breath, eyes locked on, and attention fully on what Zack was going to do next. Zack laughed hysterically, <laughs> And with another single snap of his fingers, the demons turned away from Ethan and Oliver. Ethan and Oliver seemed to immediately realize what Zack was planning to do in a flash, as the demons began to fly away to leave the city. Oliver moved forwards and attempted to block them. He grabbed at the demons closest to him and threw them, as though they were like bags of rice, two at a time towards Ethan, with overwhelming power that the demons could not even resist, and ended up reaching Ethan at lightning speed. Ethan, who had already whipped out his sword out, stilled in the middle. His fearsome weapon was suddenly enveloped with viscous black smoke, its darkness as deep as his one apparent eye. That weapon he wielded so skillfully as it flashed about, slashing so ferociously at the demons that Oliver so very helpfully threw towards him. As his sword cut through his unfortunate victims, it could be seen that those demons immediately turned into swirls of dark-colored dust, just like the one before. Oliver continued grabbing the demons and throwing them over to Ethan, getting himself into a rhythm, not letting even a single one of them leave the city. It was somewhat morbidly amusing, that the way he threw them to Ethan's direction were very similar to throwing baseballs. The duo truly looked as though they were playing a baseball game, with Oliver as the pitcher and Ethan as the batter. Only that the balls were substituted with demons, and Ethan's bat seemed to be a demonic longsword. Ha <laughs> you'd better not miss a pitch from me, Ethan, or you're dead. 
Oliver barked out in laughter, smiling so wide, with much thrill and excitement brimming in his eyes. There was no more restraint left in him. Keep them balls coming, was all Ethan said. His face was expressionless, and tone as dry as usual. Oliver only grinned even wider and continued his hunt, going after the fleeing demons and returning them to the home base. The demons did not allow themselves to be easily caught and had fought back, slashing at Oliver's limb as their powerful and sharp hands attempted in piercing through Oliver's body over and over. But in the end, the immortal dragon still was able to overpower them, and before they knew it, they were turned into dust swirls before being sucked through the vortex. Seeing the battle seemingly leaning in their favor, everyone who was watching on the ground started to feel slightly relieved. Somehow, the sight of Oliver and Ethan's seemingly perfectly coordinated movements in tandem and their incredible and unbeatable power allowed hope to spark in them again. Most especially for the fact that Ethan could kill those demons. And it seems as though he was doing it so easily. They finally saw a ray of hope and had a chance of winning and ending this tragic and impossible battle. Once Oliver and Ethan turned all those demons into dust, there would only be Zack who was left for them to deal with. Hope and excitement bloomed inside their hearts, and the urge to join in the battle became even stronger. Their fear a moment ago had subsided, and their fighting spirit came surging forth. However, before Oliver and Ethan could finish killing off all the demons, the vortex suddenly expanded into an even larger size. It had grown so large that it could even swallow half of the city now. The dark and heavy mists that surrounded the vortex seeped out ominously from the vortex itself and formed a circular barrier around it as it swirled maliciously. The darkness reigned over the area once again. Then, a silver light gleamed like moonlight next to the large black hole, and demons began stepping out of the vortex like swarms of bats. My goodness! What the hell is going on now? How could Zack have summoned such number of high-level demons? Kyle exclaimed. He felt his heart plummet from the high he had experienced earlier when both Oliver and his brother were wiping out the demons so smoothly. One summoned demon is supposed to cost one life. But Zack is an immortal. Thus, his powers are infinite right now. There is no limit to the amount of summons he can cast. Freya was the one who spoke in a weak voice. Her explanation brought chills to those who heard her words. No limits? So, you mean that the only way for us to stop this is to kill him? The gleam of hope dimmed in Kyle's expressive eyes. The number of demons stepping out of the vortex this time was even more terrifying than what they had witnessed earlier. The numbers that were summoned earlier was like a drop in the bucket when compared to the multitudes being brought forth now. Even Oliver and Ethan stilled in their well-coordinated movements as they watched the ever-increasing numbers of demons pouring out from that hole suspended in the sky. They all knew that at this rate, it would not take long for Zack to gather up the army he wanted. Ethan and Oliver would not be able to keep up their actions for much longer. Ethan glanced over at Oliver. Oliver saw the gleam in his eyes and nodded in understanding before Ethan threw him his sword. Though a smile was still seen on Oliver's face, there was no more playfulness, no more light-heartedness that were seen reflected in that cold, cynical smile as was seen earlier in the playful banter of demon baseball that was going on between the two of them. Of course, as usual, Ethan was still with his poker face. It was almost impossible to catch a sliver of a smile on that gorgeous-looking but frozen face of his. Oliver caught the sword that still had its blade shrouded with that mysterious thick black smoke as his eyes flashed a question quickly at Ethan. The Vampire Prince only took a glance at Oliver and understood his question. Make sure that no demons leave this city alive, Oliver, he said, and then he turned his back to Oliver. Not even one, Ethan emphasized this point. 
He was not a person with many words. Thus, it could be seen how important this matter was, as he had uttered so many words just to emphasize that point. Are you going to kill him? Oliver asked, his voice quiet, but carrying clearly over to Ethan. The thrill on Oliver's face was now gone, replaced by a flat, marble-like look that was devoid of emotion. However, there was a trace element of sorrow which Ethan could pick up in Oliver's tone of voice. When Ethan did not respond, even after a few seconds, Oliver's jaws tightened. He glanced over at Zack, and a trace of sadness quickly flashed across his golden eyes, too fast to be seen by anyone. But Ethan still caught that look, though he did not respond to it. Oliver had to force himself to turn his back, and with clenched fist, he flew off farther from where he initially was. It pained him that he could do nothing to save Zack. His heart ached for this person as he knew the feeling and could fully empathize with it. He could still remember the feeling as if he had just experienced it yesterday. Oliver truly thought that if death was the only way to end Zack's pain, then Oliver would not stop him and would respect his final decision. Because he himself knew, and had already experienced it once before, that sometimes death in fact was a merciful thing when the suffering is more than could be borne. He just felt dreadfully terrible that it had to be ended this way. As Oliver flew away, Ethan's hand moved to his back and his fingers wrapped around the sword's hilt. His one normal eye became so vividly red, and the blackness of his left eye seemed to ooze, and black smoke began to leak from it. With his gaze fixed on Zack, Ethan pulled the sword out of his sheath from his back. That was the same sword that used to belong to Oliver, and the very same sword that Oliver used to slay the dragon thousands of years ago. The demons spread out like birds in the sky, their numbers increasing every second that passed. However, the blade in Ethan's hands was like a death strike every time they saw a streak of silvery slash appearing here and there, and always within the areas where the number of demons were most dense. As such, it created such a stimulating scene in the sky, where the silver contrasted so glaringly with the blackened area swarming with demons. Everyone watching from below was anxiously holding their breaths, as they could do nothing but just watch on as Ethan attacked the vortex ferociously. Would he even stand a chance against this horde? They seemed to be spawning from the depths of the vortex without an end in sight. There were just too many of them. They watched as Ethan slayed and slayed. The blade in his hands was like an extension of him, carrying out his will, turning them into ashes. Those who were watching from the ground were blurry-eyed as they watched until they could not even see him anymore due to the overwhelming number of demons surrounding him. That, and also the amount of black ash that was forming like billowy clouds around him. Seeing him being shrouded and swallowed by the black mass made the rest of them looking on have a tiny grain of doubt, making them slightly afraid for Ethan, even though they knew how immeasurably strong he is. At the same time, Oliver on his part was making sure that none of the demons could escape him. He had taken upon himself the role of becoming the impregnable barrier of the city. However, everyone knew the situation was not actually getting any better, despite how it looked at the moment. It seemed that no matter how much Oliver and Ethan were killing off the demons, that large swarm of newly spawned demons being spat out by that infernal vortex surpassed the number of deaths overwhelmingly. However, there was no sign of Zack slowing down at all any time soon. He was unstoppable. The look in his eyes was sharp and did not show any intention that he would be giving up any time soon. Watching the fight from the ground, Freya felt her heartbeat grow increasingly weaker by the minute. Her breaths were becoming shallower as she clenched her cloak over her chest even tighter. Though the others were holding their breaths in anticipation of the outcome of the fight, worried to death that something would happen to Ethan, 
Freya surprisingly was not thinking the same way as the others. Despite the numbers of demons blocking his way from reaching Zack, Ethan was advancing, slowly but surely, and Freya knew in her heart as clearly as she knew her own name that the moment he reached Zack, he would kill him. She began to feel her heartbeat going erratic again, sometimes skipping a few beats, sometimes speeding up unbearably. But the intense look in her eyes never did fade, even for a second, much less dwindle. Suddenly, she turned over to Lilith, gave her a gentle and affectionate smile, and enveloped her in a warm hug. The very next moment, an explosion of something dark happened in the sky. The demons around Ethan seemed to have all been wiped out and turned into dust swirls all at once. The other demons that managed to stay out of the explosion zone backed up and spread out further away from him, more cautious and vigilant of his every move. Ethan stilled himself in the air, flapping his large wings and keeping to where he was. Half of his body was now oozing with a dark miasma, which was curiously undulating around him as if it were a living entity. That fume seemed to be the same one as that which was coming from his left eye. The already maddened Zack roared incessantly, feeling the ominous danger coming from Ethan. The newly summoned demons lined up before him, creating another barrier surrounding their summoner. And when Ethan began to proceed anyway, Zag gave a snap of his fingers, and the other demons who were spread out in the sky dove and spiraled to the ground, going towards Kyle and Lucas. It seemed that the order that was given from Zack was for them to aim for those two vampires. At that moment, both Lucas and Kyle were still not quite sure if they were the sole targets of that demon horde that was headed for the ground, as there were still others who were in the same vicinity as they were. However, after a few seconds, and seeing that the trajectory of that horde of demons were snarling and reaching towards them, they realized that they were the ones being targeted. Freya pulled away from the embrace which she had held Lilith in. Go! They'll be needing your help, Lilith. And there's no need to worry about me. The demons will not come at me, she told Lilith and reassured her before any protests could come out of Lilith about her safety and the demons attacking her. Lilith hesitated, but upon seeing Freya's determined eyes as she nodded her head, Lilith could only sigh as she relented as she let go of her. Lilith then stood up before suddenly appearing right in front of Kyle and Lucas. The two vampires had already prepared themselves and were positioned for the battle they knew which would probably kill them. Though they were confident in their fighting prowess, they were not silly enough to kid themselves. They could not even kill the one demon they fought just a while ago. How could they even survive this army of flying immortals? And that was when it was them both against one lone demon. They were not idiotic enough to lie to themselves, that they had the moralities to go against this sort of demonic force. However, with Lilith now there with them, perhaps there was some hope that they could at least have the chance to survive this attack. Lilith started chanting as she used a powerful spell and created a barrier of silver light around them, serving as some sort of transparent but powerful light shield. When the marauding demons reached them and crushed against it, that seemingly light shield managed to stop their momentum. It was successful! The barrier was working! The next second, a powerful twin force of merging wind and fire that belonged to Oliver hit into the back of the group of demons that were pushing against Lilith's light shield and were mercilessly burned and blew the demons apart. Suddenly seeing that change in tides gave a little more cheer in their little hearts as there seemed to be some hope and light at the end of this very dark tunnel which had appeared to have been set in stone. The few demons who were at the periphery that were blown further away by the blast managed to land on the ground, lightly singed by Oliver's firestorm 
Now we're in a feverish exchange against Lucas and Kyle, who were expecting them on the ground. The fierce terrain battle started. Lilith, who was stationed nearby, watched over the two vampires' back as they fought fiercely against the demons, ready to come to their aid whenever necessary. She also did not let up being attentive to the situation surrounding them, in the case that other unexpected attacks come their way. The trio's cooperation in battle was unexpectedly incredible, even though this was the first time they were fighting together. With the demons now scattered from the combined defense and attack of Lilith and Oliver respectively, and them also aiming not only on Ethan and Oliver anymore, that balance, which was barely maintained earlier, was slowly crumbling down. When Oliver came to aid his comrades on the ground, the other demons, which he was restraining, saw that as an opening, and they did not waste another moment to escape from the city. When he saw what was happening, Oliver had to immediately catapult to the sky again and rush after the escaping demons. The battle on the ground was fierce, and despite Kyle and Lucas fighting with all their might, the fact was that with just their strength, they could not kill those demons, which they were entangled with. And this just put them in the hopelessly losing side by default. All they could do at that moment was to put up a strong defense as a good offense. It did not help that they had been fighting all these while with the rogue vampires that were trying to escape the bridge and had used up quite a fair bit of their stamina and strength. But the spell that Lilith had cast was somehow working on those demons. Though she could not kill them, she could paralyze them for a while and even put them into a frenzy. She was proving to be a huge help and a valuable ally to the vampires in this fight. But even they knew that her power was not infinite, nor was it inexhaustible. Not to mention that she was still so new in using the newfound powers of the Witch Queen that she had. At some point, Lilith's barrier, which was slowly being eroded, was finally pierced by a powerful demon who had come spiraling down from the sky, catching Lilith off guard. The demon's deadly hand was outstretched and about to crush Lilith's face when the demon's arm was suddenly slashed and being cut into two. The next thing Lilith knew, she was pushed onto the ground, with Kyle lying over her, trying to use his own body as a protective covering for her. Lilith had her eyes wide because she could see more demons already flying in the air and about to crush into them and could barely wait to tear them all apart. It would be too late for them to even do anything to escape this attack. She could only close her eyes as she held onto Kyle tighter. But the pain she was expecting, and the slaughter that she had thought was going to happen, never came. When she peeked with one eye open, a dark swath of smoke welcomed her. Those attacking demons that were out for their blood had been annihilated in just a blink of an eye. Ethan stood there, oozing with nothing but darkness, as he glanced back at Kyle and Lilith. His gaze so cold and dark, it was enough to freeze the youngsters in fear. And then, he was gone. He stilled in the air right across Zack. Ethan had been wounded. A while ago, he was about to break free from the wall of demons blocking Zack, when he saw Kyle about to be killed while protecting the little witch Lilith. He had immediately turned his back to Zack, and that was when one of the stronger demons found an opening in his defense, and his arm pierced through Ethan's abdomen. With his gaze now balefully fixed onto Zack, Ethan licked the blood dripping from his lips. Then the dark smoke swirled gently around him, as though it had its own mind and purpose. After the dark smoke almost surround him, not unlike an armor, Ethan attacked again, like a lightning appearing out of nowhere. But this time, he did not attack the wall of demons directly, but flew above them, and the demons were forced to follow him. Ethan slashed his sword out and turned the first demon who reached him into black dust. And the moment all the demons came at him, Ethan backed off slightly again before twirling around as if making the motion to throw a discus. 
With an incredible power, Ethan suddenly released his sword. Zack's eyes widened, and he snapped his fingers to have the demons block him from the lightning-like sword coming at him. But it was a split second too late. The world seemed to screech into a halt as the sword reached Zack, when out of the blue, Freya materialized right before Zack, and the sword thudded into her. Zack only saw her smaller frame before him jerk with the impact of the sword, as everything in his mind died and his eyes went blank. No! In his mind, he was already roaring madly, and there was that immense pressure to just let loose and howl out his anguish. Freya! 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 Her name was reverberating over and over in his mind, overflowing his heart and causing little electric shocks in each and every cell in his body. However, outwardly, he was frozen as stiff as the thousand-year-old glaciers in the furthest part of the northern poles. It seemed as though time had stopped. All the summoned demons, too, had been frozen in their movements and were halted in place as if something had paralyzed them. The spinning and undulating haze around the vortex looked as though it, too, just suddenly froze up. The world suddenly came to a complete halt, and no sounds could be heard. The surroundings have become utterly quiet. The kind of quietness that raises the fine hairs on your skin and sends uncontrollable shivers up and down your spine. It definitely was not one of those calm and peaceful, tranquil moments. On the ground... Lilith, who had been observing what was happening around her closely, had fallen on her knees with her palms covered over her mouth. Silent tears flowed from her eyes, while Kyle and Lucas stood behind her, utterly shocked as their gazes were fixedly staring at these two persons, Freya and Zack. Their hearts were literally in their mouths, wondering what was to be with their fates. Why was it that fate had to deal such a disastrous blow to these people that they had come to care and love. Were the gods so unfair? Oliver could only clench his fists and grit his teeth. The sight of Zack's expressions reminded him of his very own situation in the past when Nora sacrificed herself in order to save him, and he could not stand to look at how things progress with Zack and Freya any longer. It was just too painful for him to continue watching. He averted his gaze and looked at Ethan, whose back was facing him as Freya and Zack began to descend slowly to the ground. By the time they finally reached the ground, Zack immediately fell on his knees, cradling Freya in his arms. Though his movements were lightning quick, those looking could tell that he was ever so gentle when his arms protectively curled around Freya. The way he handled her was as if he were touching an extremely fragile and delicate piece of glass. His eyes were slowly losing their golden fire, and for the first time since he fell into madness, his eyes returned to its original crystal-clear silver sheen again. The angel's eyes were back, but they were now filled with nothing but unbearable pain and agony so cruel. His entire body was trembling violently, as he held her. He could not even make any sound. His tears just fell, reflecting his inner heart that was surely bleeding silently. Despite the fact that Freya was the one dying, his expression and his eyes at that moment was the saddest thing she had ever personally witnessed in her lifetime. He looked as if the world had completely betrayed him and was over. She could feel his emotions clearly, and could feel from him that every hope had died for good, and there was nothing of worth left anymore. It might seem ridiculous, but seeing his expressions and his tears at that moment was probably the most painful thing. Freya wondered if she had the same look on her face when Raven had died in her arms during the time of their battle with Dahlia. No, Freya was certain the pain she had experienced and reactions at that moment 
could not even hold a candle to what Zack was going through right now. She could feel the great difference. It was agonizingly obvious. Zack was just experiencing too much agony that Freya could identify even in her bad state that her looking at him was exceptionally unbearable. Why? Why was this man always doing this to her? Why could he end up sacrificing everything for her now? He was even crying like this for her, as if... as if she were someone so very dear to him. As if she were... his life. Just what was she to him? She could feel the answer just hovering at the edge of her consciousness. But every time she tried to think things through, her blurry mind and lagging strength just could not keep up. D don't cry, Freya whispered brokenly, using everything she had left in her to tug on him and hug him. I don't deserve your tears, Zack. Please. I'm so sorry for hurting you and not granting you your wish. I want you to live. Tears streaked down her cheeks, even as she attempted to smile encouragingly at Zack, making his heart break even more. Zack shook his head so wretchedly. His silvery moonlit eyes were shuddered for a few moments when his lids closed as he drew in shuddering breaths before opening them again with a clear layer of moisture pooling in those orbs. I know... I know it will be very hard, Freya whispered. But I'm sorry, because I can't let you die. You can't die, Zack. Unlike me, you are needed here. The witches need you. The witches can survive without any queen, but not without you. I know you know what I'm talking about. You and I are the only ones who know about what is waiting in the future. One of us should live to protect our kind from possible annihilation. And that someone is no other than you. You are the only one powerful enough to go against him when the time comes. Do you understand? I'm so sorry that all I can think about even now is the witch's welfare. You must understand me, Zack. Just as how you're willing to sacrifice yourself to save me, I am the same. I will sacrifice myself to save my people. You once told me I'm the most amazing queen you've ever met. I don't know if I deserve that praise, but I always wanted to be that queen in your eyes. So please. She moved and kissed his forehead. Live. For me. Freya fell back into Zack's protective circle of arms after expanding the effort of moving forward to give him that kiss. That move sapped almost all of the remaining strength that she had in her. Her eyes were beginning to falter, and her vision got blurrier as she continued to caress his face. Please, promise me you'll end this war and live, she begged. Promise me, Zack. Please. Her voice was begging him. I, I can't. He caught her hand tenderly before it slipped down and pressed it onto his cheeks, savoring the touch of her palms on his skin. His voice was almost inaudible as he kept shaking his head in small motions like a broken machine running on a loop. Though the conversation between Zack and Freya could not be heard, those looking on could feel their hearts breaking at the tragic sight of these two people. Just the look on Zack's face was enough to drive a person with a heart of stone to shed tears. You can. I know you can. You... you love me, don't you? She asked with a tiny smile, and Zack froze. Though his tears continued flowing, what Freya just said seemed to have shaken him to his very core. Zack did not answer, but continued staring at Freya with a mournful expression and the look of being heartbroken shining from his eyes. Answer me, Zack. <coughs> she coughed, and a small spray of blood spurted out and stained the front of Zack's shirt, shocking him that he jerked a little. When he looked at her face again, 
blood had begun to trickle from the corner of her lips. Zack immediately panicked, and the agony that was momentarily forgotten came back crashing into him again. And the feeling was suffocating, to the point that he thought he could not breathe. It was as though a large tsunami wave had hit directly on him, and the pressure bore down directly onto his chest, aiming to crush his heart into minced meat. Answer me! She repeated her request, and Zack's tears flowed harder as he pressed his forehead against hers, his tears dripping like large droplets of rain onto her tired and wan face. Yes, he choked out. Yes, I love you. He could only choke out his confession. He did not think he would be revealing his feelings to Freya in this way. A small, wry and crooked smile graced his lips for a few seconds. A responding smile curved on Freya's now pale lips. Thank you, she replied. She was not a fool not to realize this possibility. No one would ever do the things he did just for anyone else. Probably not even for someone they call a good friend. At first, Freya thought that it was all because of Zack's kindness and selflessness, that he would do the same for whoever the queen at the moment was. But all the pain and sacrifices he had suffered and borne them all silently, just to keep her alive, it was truly too much. This kind of action would only make sense if he were doing it for someone he loved dearly and would willingly give up his life for. Freya did not understand how he could end up falling for someone like her, who only thought and cared for nothing else but her queendom and her people. As she thought about it further, she felt as though the answer was exactly right at the tip of her tongue. But as she pressed on to figure it out, it fluttered right out of her grasp, like the ever-elusive butterfly. Oh well, perhaps she was not fated to know the answer in this lifetime. And now, here she was, selfishly forcing him to live on, even if he did not want to, for the sake of the witches. Somehow, it was so ironic that this oh-so-selfless man had fallen so badly for such a selfish queen like her. Don't worry, Zack. I will always be with you. <sighs> she sucked in a breath, and her gaze glanced up towards the sky, before her eyelids slowly closed. I promise. Freya, Zack called out, his voice breaking as he looked down at her. His voice was so gentle, as though that even if he increased his volume a little more, it would shatter her. When she fell limp in his arms, his world came crashing down. No! W wake up! No, you can't! Tears came and he wailed. No! Don't leave me! No, don't do this to me! He hugged her as tight as he could, not caring that the sword protruding through Freya's heart pierced through his as well as he pulled her flesh against his body and hugged her tight. A little farther from them, Lilith wept, knowing that Freya had breathed her last. Kyle squatted down as well and hugged her, his eyes red-rimmed, and suspiciously watery. The night was so quiet as the rain began to fall. It fell quietly, as if respecting the somber mood of the occasion, drenching them in its cold shower. The vortex was disappearing, and demons had started to move, though this time, their connection from their summoners seemed to have broken, and they were now moving on their own. Ethan was the first to make a move upon realizing what was happening with the demons. His expression remained blank and utterly unfathomable, though the darkness surrounding him had intensified. The black miasma coming from his eyes and the half of his body blazed like black fire, and the demons who looked like they were rejoicing that they were now freed from Zack's manipulation and could now do what they want while they were on the surface now suddenly felt a paralyzing fear enveloping them. The demons who had already begun to fly out of the city froze in their tracks and looked back as well. Even Lilith and the vampires below felt it, and all of them were forced to look up towards the source of that oppressive force. 
all except for Zack. Alarmed at what he saw happening, Oliver immediately made his way towards Ethan. Ethan! He called out as he flew past Ethan and stopped right in front of him. He was about to speak again as he faced Ethan, but what he saw seemed to change his mind, and he shut his lips tight. His face that was tight and drawn earlier had now relaxed, and he seemed to be breathing easier. Oliver let out a deep sigh of relief instead. Earlier on, what he saw alarmed him for a moment when he felt Ethan's darkness and at the sight of the thick miasma around him intensifying. The reason why Oliver was always confident about Ethan was because he always believed that Ethan was just not a man who would lose control. Because he never did. The world could be ending, and everything could go wrong and go out of control, but never this man. Oliver had never seen Ethan lose control in the many years they've known each other, and through the countless problems they had faced together. This was the first time Oliver actually thought Ethan might have lost his ever unwavering self-control, and it alarmed him terribly. Knowing that it would be such a royal pain, and probably more disastrous than anything else if Ethan would actually lose control. Oliver had not seen it ever happen before, but that was exactly the reason why he was alarmed. He had absolutely no idea what exactly would happen if Ethan, the epitome of calmness and self-control itself, would ever let his darkness consume him fully. All he knew was that this world would witness an apocalypse if Ethan ever gave in and allowed himself to be fully consumed by the dark side and end up going on a mindless rampage. Because to Oliver, Ethan was still the most dangerous creature in this world he had ever known. In all the countless years that had passed, Oliver had never doubted Ethan. In fact, Oliver trusted Ethan more than he trusted himself sometimes, because he had seen countless times before that no matter what happens, Ethan always stayed in control. Nothing could ever shake him. Nothing could ever make him lose his shit. And most of all, he could control and contain what lived in his soul so perfectly, that unknown and immense source of power that many do not know about. As to how he could even do that, when it was apparent that it was incredibly powerful, Oliver did not have any idea. Ethan had been like this ever since that day. Oliver had thought that his heart had disappeared that day, and that was why nothing could ever shake and faze him anymore. And thank God, this time too, Ethan remained in control, even with such pressing circumstance. He could see it in his eyes. And even if he was letting his darkness go wilder than ever this time, he was still in the driver's seat. He was still the one in control, even though the other half of him obviously was not him anymore, or at least not his normal self that everyone recognized. What are we going to do with these demons? There are way too many of them for both of us to deal with before the curious humans arrive, Oliver said. He was feeling a little anxious as they knew that they were running out of time. These demons must be dealt with immediately now, and should not be allowed to roam about freely. Ethan did not bother to respond. He simply scanned the sky, as if estimating the numbers of the army of demons still scattered about in the sky. His eyes were sharp and penetrating, as opposed to the way he just stood there, deceptively relaxed. As Oliver noticed the way Ethan observed and mentally worked out his plan, he felt more confident, even though there was no visible indication of Ethan signaling that he could settle this issue. From what he understood of Ethan's character and the way he works, this could be considered a good indication that he had things well under control, and Oliver could feel his anxiousness abate the longer he looked at Ethan's behavior. And how about Zack? What should we do with him now? Oliver asked again. His gaze fell to the ground, and his face showed a slight tightening at the sight of Zack still hunched over and hugging Freya and weeping uncontrollably. The sight was just too familiar and painful to him. Oliver had to force himself to look away. 
They do not have the luxury of indulging in their emotions right now. The reasons was due to Oliver being worried about Zack as well. What if he ended up doing the same thing he did back then, when he was in that exact same situation? The possibility was extremely high. In fact, Oliver was expecting him to go berserk by now that Freya was dead. It could be happening any time now. With a reluctant and sullen expression, Oliver suggested, How about we erase his memories now, before he goes berserk? That would be a merciful thing for him right now. Oliver knew that in doing this, they were being cruel. But he of all people knew that forgetting was a kinder thing to do sometimes. Zack was naturally a good person. If he could forget all these things, especially about Freya and her death, perhaps they could stop another terrible disaster that was about to come. Zack right now was very much like a ticking time bomb. However, Ethan moved past Oliver silently, and when his back was facing Oliver, Ethan's deep, calm voice was finally heard. There's no need, he said decisively. What do you mean? Do you still have a plan? Or are you still planning to kill Zack? Oliver's voice suddenly became harder. He knew this was not the right time to talk, but he needed to know what this man was planning to do now. I can't just agree to you killing Zack now that Freya is dead. She had sacrificed herself to save him. Oliver's voice was grave and serious. If your only solution to this is to kill him, Freya's sacrifice would be worthless. I... I don't want her death to be in vain. Despite Oliver's almost absolute trust in Ethan and his uncanny ability of solving complex problems, when it comes to the matter of the witches, Oliver was a little skeptical. He knew Ethan would always head towards the path where the peace in this world would not be compromised. And no matter how gruesome that path was, he would not hesitate, so long as the result would keep the world from falling into ruins. A long and heavy silence reigned between them. For Oliver, the silence was due to him thinking on what more he could say to dissuade Ethan in the event that he wanted to go ahead in getting rid of Zack. For Ethan, he seemed to be thinking things over in his mind. It was definitely a rare occasion for Ethan to appear indecisive. His suspiciously long pause that was so unlike him had made Oliver's crease his brows. Oliver did not know if he should be feeling worried or happy for the decision that Ethan would arrive on after his time of reflection. I know, was all Ethan said when he finally responded. For now, we must deal with these demons first, Oliver. Oliver's attention was pulled towards the demons before them. Their eyes were all fixed towards Ethan. It was as if they were all waiting for a signal on whether to attack or retreat. Looking at their numbers... Oliver could only relent. Ethan was right on this point. It was imperative that they deal with these things first while Zack was still in that state. Anything and everything else will have to take a backseat for now. I need you to intensify the storm again. Ethan continued after seeing the consent in Oliver's eyes. The humans' military forces are on the way here. I'll be needing you to block them from reaching to this area. There's no need to kill them. He warranted before glancing back at Oliver after giving his final instructions on their plan. And Oliver knew Ethan was indirectly reminding him to control his powers so that there would not be any accidental killing of the humans. I know. Make this quick, Ethan. Oliver told him. The urgency was evident in his voice. Ethan did not speak, but went on to flap his elegant wings. The dark miasma was even enveloping his wings at this point. And then, the two of them moved, heading in the opposite directions. Ethan floated in the midst of the army of demons. In the eyes of the bystander, it would be almost impossible even for him to deal with these countless demons in a short time. It would take so long until he could turn them all into dust, no matter how strong he might be. Especially since these demons were not just some simple foot soldiers. Each of these demons could be as strong as generals themselves. The storm had regained its strength again. Oliver's wind wreaked havoc, except in the heart of the storm where everyone was at, including the demons. 
It was like time stood still in that particular area. The vampires on the ground could only brace themselves, knowing that they do not have the luxury to weep just yet. Seeing another epic battle was about to commence any moment now. Lilith, on the other hand, kept her eyes on Zack and Freya. She was unable to stop her tears too, as she looked at the heartbreaking picture of Zack still trembling in agony and sobbing endlessly as he held the motionless Freya tightly in his embrace. In the sky, the tension was impregnable, and the suffocating darkness still kept on increasing until the black miasma coming from the half of Ethan's body reached out to every demon that were within his range of sight. The faint dark smoke lingered around them, as if having a life of their own, and the demons could not help but become rigid. Until none of them made a move, only their wings and their eyeballs were the only things left moving, as if they were waiting for something to happen. All of you, leave this place, his cold and emotionless voice thundered. It was a voice that belonged to a heartless king giving out his command. You don't belong here. The smoke began to slowly seep into each of the demon's body. Anyone who resists will die, Ethan added as an afterthought, and the demons could only grit their teeth as the first thought in their mind was banished like the mist. Suddenly, the smoke began dragging each one of them back into the slowly decreasing vortex. None of the demons resisted. How about you? One of the demons, the strongest of all the demons Zack managed to summon, spoke, as the smoke began to envelop him too. Where do you even belong exactly? You and everyone else knows you don't belong here on the surface. You're supposed to be ra- before the demon could even finish his sentence, Ethan's blood-red eyes blazed, and he clenched his fist. The thin strand of wispy smoke suddenly expanded before wrapping around and strangling the huge demon. Before anyone could even blink twice, the demon screamed and then burst into dust. The demons trembled before Ethan. The sight of the huge demon suddenly and easily being reduced into a pile of dust rendered everyone speechless. Not just the vampires and witches, but more so the demons themselves. It could be seen that every single demon was tensed up and at full attention, frightened that this killing god would target them as the next pile of dust. No one dared to open their mouths again. Though nothing seemed to have changed in Ethan's expression, what the dead demon had said earlier obviously disgusted him, to the point that he deemed it proper to dispose of that demon that way. His merciless action said it all. He would kill anyone who will tell him where he was supposed to belong without any hesitation, whoever it was. As to why he seemed to hate it more than anything else, the demons did not have the slightest idea. All they knew was that spouting another word would have them killed in an instant, and no one was fool enough to test it a second time. The two who were planning to defy him instantly became docile the moment the largest demon was annihilated just by him clenching his fist. The vampires below once again could not quite believe their eyes. To them, the man single-handedly controlling the demons to return to the Vortex was not their pure-blooded prince anymore. The only trace of his vampiric trait was his right eye that still remained blood-red. That was all. That singular characteristic was all that identified him to the vampire race. With their mouths hung open, they watched speechlessly as the demons disappeared one after another like obedient puppets. No one even dared to struggle, and Ethan just remained there, still and silent, within their midst, like a god of darkness. This went on until every demon was finally gone. Ethan then flew over until he was right before the weakening vortex, and he lifted both his hands, palms facing forward. The black miasma coming from Ethan's body swirled around and half enveloped the entire vortex, and then, as if the black miasma squeezed it forcefully, 
it gradually became smaller and smaller until it eventually became as small as a baseball before finally exploding and emitting a flurry of particles like black glitters. As soon as the portal from the underworld finally disappeared, everyone felt like they could finally breathe once again. Though they knew this was far from over, at least the demons were now gone. Now it was time for them to return their attention to Zack. And what will happen next, no one could guess. Oliver landed on the ground while Ethan remained at the same spot he was in in the sky. As to what he was doing, thinking, or planning, not a single one of them had the slightest idea. Slowly, Oliver headed towards Zack and Freya. But when he was a few steps away, he halted and just stared at Zack, still crouching in the same exact position where Freya fell, hugging her as he buried his face in her hair. His body was still trembling up till now. Oliver felt that it was truly a pitiful sight to behold. The others also stood next to Oliver. Lilith's tears were still falling silently. They all stayed like that for what seemed like hours. No one spoke or even moved until Ethan finally descended. That blacker than the blackest black left eye of his was no longer there, and the miasma that was coming from the half of his body was also gone. His majestic black wings were gone as well. Oliver looked at Ethan before he walked over to him. What are we going to do now? He whispered. It does look as if Zack is not going to do anything anymore. At least with him in this current state right now. Ethan's lashes lowered as he stared at them. He was silent for a moment longer before he returned his gaze to Oliver. We need to leave this place first. Ethan said decisively as they heard sounds of helicopters approaching from far off. The humans were coming. Oliver looked at Zack, and after heaving a long sigh, he hesitantly approached them. How about the dead vampires? Kyle asked, finding it harder to speak to Ethan now, even though his appearance was back to normal, and there was no sign of the creature from a few minutes ago in him anymore. Oliver has already dealt with them. Ethan's gaze fell on the rubble not far from where they were. It was the deep hole created when Oliver fell during the flight. It seemed that the bodies of the dead were already put in there, and they had made the building, which was still under construction, to collapse and bury everything with it. Since there were no humans living in this area for a long time, no one would bother digging into it anymore, as this city would soon be abandoned completely. What about the dead vampires by the bridge? Oliver has already sent them into the ocean, said Lucas when Ethan did not respond anymore. When did they even have the time to do that? Kyle shook his head slightly as he mumbled to himself in disbelief. It's Oliver's wind. Oh, I see. Everyone went quiet again as they closely watched Oliver slowly crouch down beside Zack. Hesitantly and carefully, Oliver's hand landed on Zack's shoulder. He did not know what to say even if he had gone through this similar experience. Oliver could clearly see himself in this situation, and he knew no number of words could ever make anything better, but he had to somehow tell Zack that they needed to go now. Zack, he said, putting a slight pressure on his shoulder. We have to go now. We can't let the humans see us here. Zack did not budge the slightest. He was as good as being deaf. Zack... He called out again, but the feel of his trembling body made Oliver drop his head and then look at Ethan, knowing that Zack could not even hear anything at all. It was not that he did not want to, but he just could not function anymore. Ethan faced Lilith, and with one gesture, Lilith understood what he wanted her to do. With a shaky sigh, Lilith obeyed, knowing that they do not have much time left and she approached the two witches. Take them as far away from here as you can, towards the northern mountains. She heard Ethan's instructions, and without wasting a moment longer, Lilith lightly laid her hand on Zack's shoulder before the three of them disappeared in an instant. In the blink of an eye, the three witches materialized in a thick forest in the mountainous area 
far away from where there were humans. This was not a place where humans would traverse. In fact, people went out of their way to stay away from this place and left it well enough alone. Thus, Lilith was confident that they would be safe from detection. However, Zack did not even seem to notice that they were not in the city anymore. He was still huddled over in the same position as earlier, never letting go of Rhea. It mattered not to him where they were. All that mattered was in his arms. But the object of his focus was now unmoving and not breathing any longer. Lilith could only stand there, looking at them heartbrokenly, as she tried to steal herself. To at least stay strong on the surface, because she knew that if Rhea could still talk, she would definitely tell her not to cry. After a long while, the vampires arrived one after the other. Lilith wiped her tears with the back of her hand and looked at them. She did not know what she could do at this point. She did not even know what was going to happen now. All she knew was that there was nothing she could do, but only to rely on these vampires and wait patiently. The vampires stood a little farther off from the witches as Oliver faced Ethan. Now, what's next? He asked. Impatient was evident in his voice. Are we just going to stand around here and wait until Zack comes to his senses? Ethan met Oliver's gaze before replying. Yes, that's all we can do for now. Oliver narrowed his eyes, and his jaws clenched and unclenched alternately. Oh, I don't believe you, Ethan. Just spill it out, damn it. This would be the perfect time for us to erase his memories before he wakes up from this. But you said there's no need. Why? I want an answer now. Oliver's voice was controlled despite his frustration and anxiety. Ethan leaned against the tree and closed his eyes. For a second, it seemed as if he was tired out from all the problems that had arisen. But in the next moment, he slid down and sat on the ground in a composed manner. Give it a rest for a moment, Oliver, he said as he rested his wrists on top of his knees and dropped his head down, the only hint of him showing that he was suddenly weary. Everyone, including Oliver, was surprised at this very rare display of weakness. Ethan never needed any rest after the battles he had fought, aside from those times when Oliver had beaten him into a pulp. Ethan did not move after that. He simply stayed still and motionless, as if he were sleeping. A few drops of water dripped down from his disheveled dark hair. With a long and helpless sigh, Oliver slumped on the ground too, leaning against another tree nearby. He thought that perhaps the amount of power Ethan used to force the demons back into that portal, and then forcefully closing it, seemed to take a toll on his vampire body. Realizing this made Oliver sigh again, recalling that the number of demons he had forced back into the underworld was insane. Oliver was even more surprised, because his power and the things he could do actually surpassed his expectations. The worst was that he was convinced Ethan could even do far worse than this. However, having such a tremendous power was no joke. His power was a hundred times more powerful than what his vampire body could supposedly handle. Oliver was never worried about him previously, because he knew how strong Ethan was. But today, Oliver realized that the reason why Ethan would rather die than let his guard down was because once he did... There would be no turning back, and it would be game over for him.